Hamtech, welcome back to my videos on the UVK6 with the Fagi Reborn firmware. And yes, this one's been modified with the HF board and the memory chip. So first one is, let's just select the menu button just with a short press. You get this screen. Now mine is on selection VFO. So let's just press that. It, says, it actually says two VFOs. If we select, and then look, we've got A and B band. If we press menu again, go to the top one, press select, we've got one VFO. Uh, press menu again, and then we get the pro version. And you have these extra selections here, look, okay? You can scroll through them with number four and eight goes right and left. And when you're on one, you can adjust things going up and down, okay? I like to just use it in dual band mode. So we just go menu and dual VFO menu. That's the one I like to use in. To go from A to B band, you just hold down the two. Okay, A and B. And to go to VFO memory, oops, let's just come out of that. To go to VFO memory, just hold down the three. That's memory and then VFO, and you can do it on A or B band. Let's go back to A. To change the mode, just hold down the zero, and you'll see it changing just here. And it even says raw WFM. Oops, I keep, you have to hold it, yeah? And back to FM. To type a frequency, so let me go four, three, four. To put the dot in, press the star. Then five, five, zero, and then menu. And we're now listening to Hubnet. Now the, the middle antenna is for HF. And then the normal antenna is doing what it always does. That's good, works well. In this window, you can press F. And when you scroll up and down, you can put in everything. Say you're gonna set up a repeater. You can put in your, let's just go menu, your TX frequency. Let's go menu like so. And so we'll go four, three, four, five, five, zero, enter. Okay, let's just check that that's there. Yeah, it's there. Oh, uh, maybe we need to, need to put in more noughts. So, I'm making a booboo already. <laughs> uh, there you go. All noughts in. Hopefully, that's right. Let's check. Hmm, not really sure. But anyway, TX frequency, receive frequency. It's, it's, not, it's not showing me the naught, as you can tell. And then go down to, we want offset. Let's go menu, so we'd go naught dot, will it put the dot in for me? Or do I have to press that? Yeah, 600 menu. And transmit offset direction menu. So we go minus, select the power. I've noticed actually lets you select, if you go down another one, the actual radio. And then when I'm looking at this list here, it's all like all different, you know, numbers. Now the one that I know mine came with is ZS14732. So I'm going to select that. And then once you've done it, you can select save, go down to save, and then you can put it into a, a list of memory channels there and you can even name it. Another thing you do when you're in this window, hold down the M and you get a new window of selections called main app so go select that and that's where we were but if we go back let's exit again hold down m and now we're going to go down and keep going and you'll find dual watch so you'll hear both but they're monitored you won't hear both at the same time backlight is number 10 so you just go menu and you can go up or down with the brightness menu to select Backlight time menu, and you've got your time on or minutes, and then exit to come out of that. Quite a few squelch modes. You've got contrast, scrambler, DTMF decode, up converter, that's an interesting one. And then power off, filter board. So quite a lot to learn here. Battery calibration and the battery type, that's Mazzy bumping into my stand. The battery type, you, you can select which battery you've got in your display. 
uh, channel display. If you go menu, look, you can go name and frequency, frequency or just the name. Exit from that. Turn the beeps on and off. STE, what's that? Go menu. I don't actually know what STE is. Someone tell me. Roger beep. Tone local. Okay. Again, don't know idea. Lock PTT. EPROM reset. Now, why would we need to do that? It's a good one, isn't it? I'm not really sure because we do make a backup of this radio. So that's your basics, really. If you hold down, this is as it came out of the box. Hold down the top button beneath the PTT, you start to get this window here. If we press it again, just seeing if anything else does anything when I'm, ah, look, something's, no, I'm not really sure. Yeah, okay, I haven't done that before. Ah, look, memory channels, okay. And let's exit. And then we'll press the bottom one. And look at that, scanning away. So with this with this software, it's it's quite a lot even for me to take in. So I'm doing videos that aren't too long and too confusing because you can see even I'm confused. But the basics are that it does do HF. I'll just connect my antenna. It's the SMA and then we've got this adapter that came with it, BNC. And then I just get put the same antenna that I use on all my other HF. Radius which is 49 to 1 ballon and a 66, 66 foot length of wire. Then we'll hold down, oh, that's what I should have showed you. If you hold down the band, you can select which band you want, okay? So we're going to select, uh, I want 40 meters. You've got CB, PMI, everything you can think of is there. So I'll just show you. Military, CB, EU, UK, air band, business, marine things that I've never even heard of. <laughs> but let's go back to, so you select the band. We've even got Laura, and that's um, Meshtastic. 23 SEMs, 160 megs, here it goes, 40. Then we're gonna go menu. Now sometimes if it doesn't work straight away, just turn the radio on and off, I've noticed. We'll, we'll do the wait, and if that doesn't work. It did work. And Obviously, the antenna is important. You're not going to pick up anything on a put, putting your rubber duck from here to here. It's not going to work. You need a proper HF, very long wire antenna. And when I say long, you're talking like 50, 100 feet long. And when it's busy, it's really busy. You can still change the the mode. Hold down the zero. You can still do that. It must reboot because it makes you wait. See the way it's gone a bit funny now? So if I turn it off and on, it comes back to life. Reborn. And you can load in the KD8CC firmware, IJV. I'm not sure if Exuma's done one for the HF mod. I need to check, really, don't I? Completely usable, isn't it? I'm not sure why it switches to that screen. You can select the bandwidth, of course. Go down here. And the game, by the looks of it. It's on auto at the moment. Squelch type, squelch level. The only thing I'm finding is that when I go to save, Oh, that was better then. I go save. Oh, oh, there it is there. Uh, 
how to come out of this screen. So I didn't select this. There it is, single screen. Oh, gone to way out of band there. So, after this is a more of a settings video, I will make another video where I load the firmware as well. But remember, this one has had the board, the, the modification board added with the big sort of EEPROM and the amplifier chip and also the larger memory chip so you can store more memory channels. Bye for now.